Good evening, Lighthouse family. It's Thursday evening and it's time for Bible study. I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you all for joining in with us on today as we continue to navigate our way through the Old Testament in our Bible survey. So if you will, let's jump right in today. As you see on the board uh, behind me here, today we will be uh, covering uh, First and Second Chronicles as we continue through this uh, historical period period of our uh, Old Testament of Israel's history. So um, before we jump into all of that, um, again, we will be covering First and Second Chronicles, but let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for uh, waking us today and keeping us today. Lord, for you still prove yourself every day. Lord, you prove yourself in one way or another. But here it is that we can walk away today knowing that you are still a keeper. Lord, we walk away from today knowing that you are still a protector. Lord, we walk away today knowing that you are a covering. Lord, we walk away knowing today that you are our Father. Lord, we walk away today knowing just more of you and Lord, how you continue to pr protect and keep and cover us, your people. So Lord, today we give your name praise for these things. Lord, today we give you honor. Lord, today we give you glory. Lord, just uh, just through the lifting of our hands and the lifting of our hearts, Lord, and our surrendering to you. Father, we know that, um, that in spite or anything that we can see, Lord, or anything that we experience, Lord, that you are still our God, Lord, that you are still good to your people. And Lord, it is your loving kindness that continue to see us through, Lord. It is your loving kindness that is better than life itself for what we know it. So Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the giving of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who gave up his life, Lord, so that we may live for eternity and be with you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave up his life so that we may be redeemed uh, to you. So Father, we are thankful and we are grateful. Now, Lord, on today, as we come together for uh, this Bible study, Lord, your word says that we should study to show ourselves approved as a workman before you that need not be ashamed, therefore rightly dividing the word of truth. Lord, as we continue just to navigate our way through this uh, Bible survey, Lord, we ask that you give us clear understanding, uh, Lord, and that you would give us wisdom as well, Lord, as how your word pertains to us. And then finally, Lord, as it is always our prayer here at the Lighthouse on the Pike Church. Lord, would you teach us to be better doers of your word and not just hearers alone? So, Father, I thank you and I bless you and I ask all of these things in the name of your son, Christ Jesus, and let the people of God say amen. As mentioned earlier, we will be covering uh, First and Second Chronicles on today as we uh, continue to navigate our way through this Bible survey. Now, if I had not mentioned it before um, over the last few weeks, and I don't remember that I have, maybe I had, I know I talk real fast, and I'm always trying to dump out a whole lot of information uh, to you all in this little uh, space of time that we have together and so first and second chronicles we're almost to the end we're almost to the end of what is known as the historical books of Israel so we had the first five books of, of the Bible in our Old Testament and we addressed that already uh, in some cases is known as the Torah is known as the law and those are the first five books or and also it's, it's, it's also known as the Pentateuch the Pentateuch meaning it's the first five books of of the Bible, and that covers uh, Genesis, uh, Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Again, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I left out Leviticus. So those are the first five books of the Bible. And again, that's known as the Torah. It's known as uh, 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 the law of Moses or the books of the law or it's also referred to as the Pentateuch and then once we get to the book of Joshua once we get to the book of Joshua from Joshua all the way to um, 
from Joshua all the way through the kingdom period, all the way through the book of Nehemiah, those are referred to or known as the historical books. So these past books that we've been covering with Israel entering the land and Israel conquering the land and then during the time of the judges where every man did what was right in his own eyes and then by the time we make it to Samuel and Israel asks for a king and God appoints Saul as its king and then uh, Saul does not do it right, do what's right before the eye in the eyes of the Lord, like many of those, the people before him anyway. And then God appoints David or anoints David as king and then Solomon thereafter. And we talked about the kingdom splitting because of Solomon's apostasy and 10 tribes to the north known as Israel, two tribes, Benjamin and Judah to the south known as the kingdom of Judah. And we talked about how there was a united kingdom period for 120 years under the reign of Saul, David and Solomon. And how Israel was united as a united kingdom, and then we get to we get we get to Solomon and Solomon's apostasy. The Bible talks about how when Solomon, in his older age, uh, heart was divided because of his wives. He had married these foreign wives, and he had set up uh, a, a worship stations or asterisk poles. He set up high places to worship these foreign gods, and because of Solomon's apostasy toward God, God took the kingdom. Um, uh, 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 split the kingdom up, but God kept his promise to David in the Davidic covenant. Then God promised David that he would always have a seed on the throne. So God split the kingdom again, the 10 tribes to the north known as Israel, the two tribes to the south known as Judah and how the kingdom, uh, after the kingdom split, how the kingdom was taken captive now the Assyrians captured or sacked Israel, the northern kingdom, in 722 BC, and then the Babylonians came along and took the southern kingdom because the southern kingdom did just like their brothers to the north. They began to worship other gods and therefore the Babylonians came and took uh, the southern kingdom captive. And that's all part of Israel's history. And those things were discussed uh, with the captivity and the splitting of the kingdom was, was discussed in first and second Kings. And now we are here in first and second Chronicles, first and second Chronicles, where First and Second Chronicles actually is going to uh, cover some of the same information, some of the same information that we have discussed in uh, between uh, b between First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings and First and Second now First and Second Chronicles. What it's actually going to do is the book of uh, First Chronicles. First Chronicle is going to highlight. It's going to show us some highlights of David's reign. So it's going to go back and it's going to talk about King. David and some of the highlights of his ministry, well not of his ministry, but of his kingdom period, of his kingdom. And then uh, Second Chronicles is going to cover King Solomon again, but it's also going to give us more of an account of the history of the southern kingdom. And that's, and that's important because when we look at Second Kings, uh, the book of Kings cover more of the history of the northern kingdom. It does mention the southern kingdom, but it tells us more about what took place in the northern kingdom. And now Second Chronicles is going to uh, give more information or cover detailed information about the southern kingdom that we know that remember from hence uh, from henceforth uh, we when we mention Israel we're only talking about the northern kingdom we're only talking about the northern kingdom and for all intents and purposes when we say Judah we're referring to the southern kingdom at least uh, it will be that way up until Israel is now returned uh, back to their land. And at this point, it still follows the chronological order of the southern kingdom and the Babylonian captivity. We really don't hear much about the northern kingdom anymore, the northern kingdom anymore, or those 10 tribes that was to the north. So, but once the but once Israel or the people are sent back to the land. And by the time we get to the New Testament or the Gospels anyway, and I, I, I do uh, make a distinction between that, um, and I'll just say it now early. <laughs> just and I've mentioned it before. So for those of you who are here at the Lighthouse on the Pike, it won't be new, nothing, anything new that you've heard me say before. Some of you all that uh, you're you're new to our Bible studies or you're new to our teaching to, to, to the teaching that goes on here. If you're just new to me, uh, 
period. Uh, I will say this, and I throw this out always just to kind of make your eyebrows go up. So uh, at least to the time we get to the Gospels, and I do make a distinction between the Gospel and the New Testament, because in our Bibles, yes, uh, we see the Gospels after we see that cover page that says the New Testament. However, comma, technically, the time in which the Gospels take place is still under the law. It's technically still the Old Testament or the Old Covenant. The New Covenant does not begin until Jesus goes to the cross. And then from there on, so actually in our Gospel stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the New Testament actually begins after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if we were just looking at it from a technical standpoint, the book of Acts is our first New Testament book. However, we need the Gospels to fit right there because it works as a bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Jesus is revealed to us for the first time um, in that regard as Jesus, as in the person of Jesus, uh, is revealed to us and for the first time in the Gospels, and then also we're introduced to Peter and John and James and the rest of the disciples because these end up being the people who introduce us or who the Lord Jesus has used to usher in this New Testament church. So I know I'm getting way ahead of myself with that, but this is that's just me explaining to you because remember, our Bible is a puzzle. And before we can divide it or take it apart, we should know how it is put together. I'm taking, I'm taking my time on this for a reason. So we got the first five books of the Bible that is known as the Pentateuch or the Torah or the law. And what we've been covering these past several, over the last several weeks is the historical books. It's the his, history of Israel as a nation, how they came to be a nation, uh, how they, how the nation fell um, under the kings and things of that nature. And so uh, we're going to do first and second chronicles today. And remember, we talked about in first and second Kings, how the kingdom was split. But as we cover Ezra and Nehemiah um, and uh, 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 Esther, um, those stories cover uh, the return, if you will. Well, Esther, they were still under captivity. But by the time we get to uh, 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 Nehemiah and Ezra, now they're returning back to their land. So those sections, those sections of the Bible cover Israel's history. And then by the time we get to the prophets, we spoke about the prophets, how they're, uh, we spoke about the minor and the major prophets, but those prophetical books, some of them were pre-exilic prophets. Those were the prophets... Uh, the ones that actually wrote anyway, they're the writing prophets, because we mentioned uh, there's many of prophets that are mentioned in our Bible, but the actual writing prophets, some of them are pre-exilic prophets, and they prophesied, they spoke about a time to come where Israel would be taken captive, and then we have those exilic prophets, those prophets that were there during the captivity, and then we have the post-exilic prophets would be the prophets that uh, prophesied to Israel. Israel after they had returned to the land and those the prophetical books covers that particular period of time so actually what we're seeing in our Bible is like some of these stories overlap uh, some of these stories or some of the books uh, were not um, actually uh, chronological order in the sense of one happened and then two happened and then three happened. Note some of the books and the writings, they were contemporaries of one another, meaning these events were taking place at the same time, um, kind of like the Gospels. Our Gospels are very are, are, are synonymous, at least uh, the first three Gospels is in their writing, uh, meaning that the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, pretty much say the same thing. Uh, they're, they're, they're written from the particular, from the author's point of view, but they pretty much say the same versus uh, the Gospel of John. 91% uh, of the information that we see in the Gospel of John, and even though it, he, it, that John was there uh, as a disciple of Jesus during the same time as Matthew, at least, uh, Luke came along another time, and Mark probably was a young man um, during the time. But the point is that the gospel writings are synonymous with one another. They pretty much say the same thing where the gospel of John, 91% um, of that information is not covered in the other gospels. But likewise, when we look at the prophetical books, 
and even some of those historical books, these events or these people um, were contemporaries of one another. Uh, so they pretty much was uh, prophesying at the same time. And we see uh, what was taking place with that particular writer or the author and the people which whom he was speaking with. Uh, case in point, uh, Daniel, Daniel would have been prophesying uh, during the captivity. But Daniel, we know through the story, and I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't gotten to the book of Daniel. Daniel was in the palace. Daniel was in the palace where we have people like Ezekiel who was out amongst the people. But so when we turn to our Bible pages and we see that this story follows this story, we may think just our brain is programmed a way to think that, okay, well, this story happened after this story. But if we look at the timeline and what's happening, again, some of these guys were contemporaries with one another. And some of them never even knew each other as well. But it's just, it's, I, I just love the Lord's word and understanding that all scripture, all scripture is God breathed or God inspired how God himself orchestrated these writings um, so that you and I can have them here today to learn more about the character of God and who he is and how he relates to his people. So that's enough about all of that. But I do want to add um, one other note here before we jump in um, the book of Chronicles. So, yes, we pretty much cover a book every week, a book every week. And uh, someone innocently asked me, Pastor G, um, is everybody like really reading a whole book uh, in a week? Because, I, because you know, I'm reading and I can't read that fast. And I, I, I chuckled a little bit. And the answer is no. If that, because if, this, if if you're thinking that same way, are you expected? Are you expected to read a whole book within a week's time frame before we come back together? The answer is no. We're doing a Bible survey, which means that we're just covering, we're just skimming the top, we're just skimming the top, and week in a week out. All I'm doing is I'm giving you the summary of what's being covered in the book. Uh, we discuss a little bit about the author, uh, the author of the book. I'll give you the theme, meaning that this is the main theme or main idea that you'll see in the book. And then I probably give uh, the, the last two things is I give you a couple of key verses on how you can see through that key verse or those verses that this is the general theme of what the author was trying to get across in this particular book. It's like a little cheat sheet. And then I conclude with an outline of the book. So, and the point is, the point is too, I am an advocate of biblical literacy. I, it is my mission. I just think that this is just who God made me. Um, everybody has their own assignment in the body of Christ. My assignment is to try to inspire people to read their Bibles. And I know you say, well, Pastor G, I read my Bible or I've read my Bible. Yes, that is true for a lot of us, but a lot of us have read our Bibles through the lenses of the preachers and the people who we set up under, which is not a bad thing. Uh, within itself, however, comma, again, the Bible tells us that we are to study, to show ourselves approved. That means that each one of us as individuals have a responsibility to study the word of God. We should know what it says for ourselves. Therefore, because this is, this is for everybody that has the question about, well, how do I know if God is speaking to me or how do I know what God is saying to me? God will introduce himself first, 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 and primarily we'll get to know him through his word. And if in fact, if in fact we only know the word through or from the mouths of other, I mean, people, and again, I would never, ever purposely try to mislead you uh, with the word, but I am human and I am fallible. And people have the propensity of adding their own, uh, even in even, even interpret, interpret, interpretation, um, their own ideologies and adding things and taking things away. Some do it innocently, if you will. Some do it maliciously where they have um, 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 selfish reasons for doing that. But whether good or bad and or indifferent, the point is that we should each, every single last one of us has a responsibility to know the word for ourselves. 
Pastor G, you're babbling. No, I'm just saying that it is my it, it is my heart's desire that these Bible survey classes is inspiring you to go and read the word for yourself. Therefore, the Holy Spirit has something to work with in revealing all truth and all understanding. So, no, I am not expecting for you all to read a book a week. If you are doing that, that is absolutely great. <laughs> but the point is, I'm just giving you some ideas, uh, some summaries, if you will, a little cheat sheet is what we can call it. So that, cause I understand there was a time where I found the Bible very hard to understand. And people say it all the time. Now I find the Bible hard to understand. Well, if you are watching these videos, and you are the, the streaming of the service. And um, now every other Tuesday, we're having a Zoom Bible study. The information to show up, it showed up at the beginning of the stream and it'll show up at the end of the stream um, where you can come on Zoom and we can discuss what we uh, talked about um, here on the Thursday night Bible study. So that's every other Tuesday and that information will be there for you. So like now we can converse and engage one another and discuss the word, the, the word of the Lord. And that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. So um, again, these, this Bible survey is designed to give you all information, some tools to help you in your reading and your studying of the Bible. Let's jump in this real quick. So I've used up most of my time and I won't be here before you long. First and second Chronicles is actually I know you say it's a long read, but technically, uh, originally anyway, um, this was one book. It was just one book. It was divided uh, in here in our English Bible as two particular books. But originally, the Chronicles was just one writing. And that's what we're starting off with. First and Second Chronicles formed one book in the Hebrew Bible. If you all ever have a chance to look at a Hebrew Bible, um, like many of the other books, First and Second Chronicles is just one book. Chronicles, Chronicles begins, begins with the death of Saul, of King Saul. It begins with the death of Saul and it continues the history of Judah throughout the Babylonian captivity. Remember, we spoke about that last week and we spoke about it the last couple of weeks anyway, that uh, Judah, the southern kingdom, uh, was taken captive by the Babylonians in 586 BC, 586 BC. So uh, Chronicles, both uh, first and second Chronicles covers the period beginning with the death of Saul and it continues throughout the history of Judah through the Babylonian captivity. It covers it covers about the same time period as 2 Samuel and 1 and 2 Kings. So I said that already, that some of the information you'll see overlap, some of the information or one or two of the stories, uh, you'll see the exact same story because it is covered during the same period as 2 Samuel and 1 and 2 Kings. Chronicle, however, centers, so, but it focuses more or less on the temple worship. It focuses on the temple worship, the priest, and the Levites. So, sex, so Chronicles, if you will, you'll see that it centers, centers more on the temple worship, the priest, and the Levites. Therefore, therefore, if it centers on the temple worship, the priest, and the Levites, come on, Bible scholars, you automatically ought to know what part of the land that is covering because the temple... The temple was built in Jerusalem. Solomon built his temple in Jerusalem. So therefore, the book, the, the chronicle centers on Jerusalem and has little material about the northern kingdom. Remember that Solomon's temple was built in Jerusalem. It was built in Jerusalem. Actually, as a matter of fact, the city of David, the city of David is was built in what is known today as Jerusalem. So uh, therefore, if the Chronicles is focused on the priests, the Levites, and temple worship, then that lets us know that the priests and the Levites pretty much would have been in the temple. So it focuses on the, the southern kingdom known as Judah, and it doesn't say much about the northern kingdom. First and second Kings, as I said, spoke earlier, first and second Kings have much more to say about the northern kingdom. So if you're interested in Israel, the northern kingdom, you'll find those details about them uh, more or less in first and second Kings. Okay. 
So the uh, first and second kings have much more to say about the northern kingdom and much more about the prophets. Now, this is not to be confused with the prophetical books, because there were many prophets throughout the time of Israel who did not write a particular book. At least we don't have any writings for them. Um, case in point, um, Elijah and Elisha or Elisha is a better way of pronouncing it. So uh, the, the so first and second kings have much more to say about the northern kingdom and the prophets and the prophets. Elisha and Elijah and Elisha or Elisha play a large part in Kings. In the book of Kings, Elijah and Elisha, Elisha plays a major part in the book of in the king with the, with the kings. While Elijah is mentioned only once in Chronicles, Elisha is not mentioned at all. So we'll see Elijah being mentioned in the book of Chronicles, but Elisha, who succeeded him, isn't mentioned at all. Kings and Chronicles, as I mentioned again, see, I, I, I have to get to talking and get ahead of myself. Kings and Chronicles are a lot like the Gospels. Each one of them, in its unique way, presents the same general period of time, but with different emphasis with different emphasis um, so again it'll cover the same thing but now it's emphasis on the priests the Levites and the temple worship likewise you'll see the similarities uh, I talked about the synoptic gospels the similarities in the writing but each one of those writers uh, they, they focus on a different emphasis about Jesus Matthew Matthew's gospel shows Jesus as being this king uh, this Messiah of Israel if you will uh, the Messiah that Israel was waiting for so Matthew's primarily audience primary audience was the Jews where Mark writes to the Romans Luke's gospel is to the, uh, the to the Greeks John's gospel is to the whole world John showing Jesus as the son of God Luke shows Jesus as the son of man and Mark's gospel showing Jesus as this perfect man if you will so they all cover the same time period but they all have a different focus and likewise you'll see the same thing with kings and chronicles um, you'll see that similarity as with the, the, with the gospels the purpose the purpose of chronicles seem the purpose of chronicles seem to give a history of the house of david which makes sense because remember god split the kingdom and god put a new uh, uh god chose someone new to be king over israel but God, during the Davidic covenant, made a promise with David that David would always have a seed to secede him or someone from David lineage would secede him on the throne, which is Judah. So if, in fact, it's focusing on Judah, the purpose of Chronicles pretty much focuses on the history of the house of David or those who uh, were the successors on the throne in Judah during the kingdom period and of the temple and of the priesthood during David's dynasty. So uh, the Chronicles are pretty much focusing or honing in on the house of David and that was the priesthood and uh, those who succeeded him as king during the kingdom period um, of the house of David or David's dynasty, if you will. The date, the date of the book, First Chronicles, covers a period of about 40 years. First Chronicles covers a period of about 40 years from the death of Saul to the beginning of Solomon's reign. Remember, as a united kingdom, uh, the kingdom of Israel as a whole it was united under one king for 120 years, 40 years being accredited, accredited to Saul, 40 years to David, and 40 years to Solomon. So First Chronicles covered the period of about 40 years, which was uh, the death of Saul to the beginning of Solomon's reign, which is just a long way of me saying that the First Chronicles covered David's, David's time as king. So it covered about 40 years. The events described in 2 Chronicles, the events described in 2 Chronicles cover a period of about 425 years. So 1 Chronicles only covers about 40 years, but the events in 2 Chronicles covers about 425 years from the beginning of the reign of Solomon to the decree of Cyrus uh, for the rebuilding of the Jerusalem after the captivity. So this is key because 2 Chronicles Second Chronicles cover a time period from the when Solomon became king 
all the way to the king through the kingdom split all the way through uh, 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 through through Judah being taken captive and the years that they were held captive throughout the time of the rebuilding of Jerusalem after they were sent back after the time of captivity so it covers that second chronicles covers about 425 years Wow, we kind of missed that in just our reading um, because a lot of times even I'm guilty of it. I've just read through stuff just to say that I read it. But like, no, that one book, Second Chronicles, covers 425 years of history. The themes, the themes of First and Second Chronicles, you'll see First Chronicles, as I mentioned, highlights David's reign highlights David's reign and then second second chronicle as you see right here on the board uh, covers Solomon and the or the theme of it anyway if you will is Solomon and the history of the southern kingdom I'll say that for you again first chronicle the theme is the highlights of David's reign second chronicles the theme is Solomon and the history of the southern kingdom First Chronicles reveals the desire of David to build the temple. Remember, David wanted to build God a temple, but God told him no, that he couldn't do it because he had blood on his hand. However, that his seed uh, would, would build God a house. And that, that came in the likes of Solomon because David wanted to build. David, David really had a heart for God. And, and, and we saw that when God called David, when God first anointed David, uh, when Saul had disobeyed him, uh, God told uh, Samuel that I found the man after my own heart. And David was just a young boy at the time. And even though David, just like every single last one of us, David was, you know, he, he, he was Israel's super king, if you will. But David still, David still needed a savior, just like any one of us, any great leader. We can be great or the people can deem us as great, but we still need a savior in Jesus Christ. There's only one perfect person that ever came um, in the history of man and that was Jesus. David still needed a savior so God did not allow David to build him a house but because he realized that David had a heart he allowed that to happen through David's seed that it would still be through the house of David that a house was built for God and likewise this is so key because it was through the house or the lineage of David if you will that Jesus came. Jesus was from David's lineage. So God covers two things with Jesus. A, the earthly man, Jesus, comes through the line of David. Therefore, as God promised, that David would always have a seed on the throne. Jesus is always always going to be on the throne. No one will ever be able to take him off of the throne. So God kept his promise with David there. And then likewise, even through Jesus, this is through Jesus. That is the body is the body of Christ or the body, if you will, of the church that Jesus sits as the head. And Jesus says in the gospel of John that I am in the father. He is in me. We will be in you. You will be in us. So now, well, if Paul explains this in first or second Corinthians that you are now the temple. You are now the house of the living God by way of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So here it is again that we see that uh, 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 that this house is being built uh, and for for God or this temple is being built through the line of David. And we know his name of Jesus Christ. I just I mean, I, it's not my revelation. That's what the Old Testament, the Old Testament conceals Jesus. And then he's revealed the revelation of Jesus Christ is what the book of Revelation is actually called. So. Here it is that uh, Jesus is ultimately that temple, if you will, now in us, we're in one body. Um, we're the temple of God. My God, that'll preach all by itself. So Second Chronicles, First Chronicles reveals the desire of David to build the temple. And Second Chronicles records the departure of the people from the temple and its worship. It records the departure of the people. The temple was eventually destroyed because of Israel, because of Judas, Israel's um, disobedience to God. Now let's look at the key verses. We're almost finished here. We're almost finished here. Let's look at the key verses on how we got 
these um, themes. So if you look at First Chronicles, the theme, the, the key verses for First Chronicles, you can find in chapter 29, First Chronicles chapter 29. I thought I had it already. I don't. First Chronicles chapter 29. I'm old school. I like reading my Bible. I mean, I do have it on my phone and my computer and everything. But standing before you all, just like I just like to feel the pages between my fingers. But if you have a phone or a tablet, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's still God's word. Um, chapter 29, verses 26 through 27 of First Chronicles read... Remember um, that First Chronicles, the theme is the highlights of David reign. And it is the very last paragraph, if you will, of First Chronicles. And here's what here's how First Chronicles conclude. It says, thus, David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all of Israel. The time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. Um, then he died at a good old age, full of days, uh, riches and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. Now, the acts of King David from the first to last are written in the chronicles of Samuel, the seer, and the chronicles of Nathan, the prophet, and in the chronicles of Gad, the seer, with the accounts of all his rule and his might and of his circumstances that came upon him and upon Israel and upon the kingdoms of the countries. And that's how First Chronicles read. It just tells us, it concludes that these are all of the things that David did from, this, from his early reign up into his death. And then we got a we got a few verses here for Second Chronicles that gives us the theme of uh, Solomon and the history of the southern kingdom. And the first one can be found in chapter one, verse one of Second Chronicles. The first one can be found in chapter one, verse one. If you will turn there with me or flip there with me. And it reads Second Chronicles, first verse, one, chapter one, verse one reads that Solomon the son of David established himself in his kingdom and the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Right there, chapter one, verse one of Second Chronicles. If you don't read anything past that, it lets you know what this book is going to be about. Chapter one, verse one says Solomon. Remember, David is past now at the end of First Chronicles. Solomon, the son of David, establishes himself in his kingdom and the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. The second verse, key verse here in Second Chronicles that lets us know that this is about Solomon in the history of the southern kingdom. You can find a chapter 5 Chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. And it reads, Thus all the work that Solomon did for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated and stored the silver, the gold, and all of the vessels and the treasures of the house of God. So when we get to chapter 5, all of the work that Solomon had did for the house of the Lord is now finished. Solomon, remember God promises David in 1 Chronicles that his seed Solomon would build a house for God. And then the last verse that we have here is found in chapter 36 of 2 Chronicles. Chapter 36 of 2 uh, Chronicles and they can be found in verses 14 through 18. And uh, chapter 36, verses 14 through 18 reads, All of the officers of the priest and the people likewise were exceedingly faithful, following all the abominations of the nations. And they polluted the house of the Lord and that he made and that he had made holy in Jerusalem. They polluted the house of the Lord and that he had made uh, the, the things that the Lord had made holy in Jerusalem. Verse 15, the Lord, the God of their fathers, sent persistently on them, to them his messengers because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they kept mocking the messengers of God, despising his words and scoffing at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people until there was no remedy. Therefore, he brought up against them the king of the Chaldean, the Chaldeans who killed their young men with the sword and the house and, and Killed the young men, killed their young men with the sword, with the sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion on young man or virgin, old man or age. He gave them all into his hand. 
Verse 18, and all of the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and his princes, all of these brought into Babylon. Wow. You see, at the beginning of Second Chronicles, after King Solomon had built a temple, he brought in all of Israel's treasures into the temple, and he was favored by God. And this is a sad ending here in 2 Chronicles, but this is what it's about. It's about King Solomon. It's about King Solomon in the history of the southern kingdom. But So by the time we get to the end of 2 Chronicles, again, it's some 425 years this covers that the Lord, because he, because he loved Israel, because he had patience with them, he had compassion on them, he persistently, the writer writes, he, he persistently sent them messengers he persistently, the Lord was persistent in sending messengers to his people to constantly warn them that, hey, stop worshiping false gods. Turn back, repent, turn back to the Lord your God. He persistently sent them worship. I mean, it sent them messengers, but the people continued to mock the prophets. They continued to mock the prophets. See, the prophets in the Bible was not the prophets that we see now that was promising houses and cars. If we stand in a hundred, if we give a hundred dollars or if we give a thousand dollars or if we dance and run around the church, there's great blessings for you. You know, when the prophet, when the seer, when the man of God, as they called them, came to the people in most cases. Now, they did come with good messages, but in most cases, people understood that when they saw a prophet, it wasn't about to be good. God was sending them a messenger because they wouldn't listen to God on their own. So the prophets often came with messages of warning. The Bible says that God persistently sent his messengers because he had compassion for them. But they mocked the messengers. They mocked the messengers and they despised the words of God and they, and they scoffed at the prophets and they did it so much so until they provoked the wrath of God and the Lord himself rose up against them. See, and that's what we see in the Bible context. So when we see the likeness of the Assyrians to Israel and the Babylonians to, uh, to, to Judah, Yes, we can say that they were Israel's enemies. However, Israel's enemies, just like if we look through the rest of the historical books, the only time Israel's enemies were able, were able to take the people of God captive was when God allowed them to. And God only allowed them to only and only when the people of Israel were disobedient and completely ignored the warnings that God would send to them. Therefore, them being taken captive was a result of their direct sin against God. Nothing, absolutely nothing could overtake God's people as long as they did right before the Lord God. Now, I'm not saying that they would have been sinless because Jesus had not come to take away sin from man. So all men were sinful, sinful nature, but their hearts were turned away from God. They would not worship. They would not worship the Lord God and the Lord God only. Because of their sinful nature, they would always turn away from God. They would turn to God and turn away from him. Turn to God, turn away from him. Turn to God, turn away from him. Sound like us today. Because we have a sinful nature, which every day that I have, that every day that I wake up, every day that I live, every hour that I'm here on the earth, every birthday that I have, I now in my maturity see how much more and more and more I need Jesus. It's not a one-time thing. I know I'm, I'm being preachy. Listen, Jesus is not a one-time thing. You don't just accept him at the beginning or at the call of salvation and then that's it. No. We have to now press forward toward the mark of the high calling, as Paul says it, because every day I realize the older I get, the more mature I, I become in Christ, the more I recognize that I need him more. I need him more because I see all of these things that still reside in me. I see this nature that exists in me. And likewise, Israel 
God was patient with them, but they still continued to turn away from God. And therefore God gave them up to their enemies. And I say that to say that there are some things that you and I experience today. It is not because stop listening to the drama. Stop you. If you're if you're the one giving it, stop the drama. Stop all the drama preaching. Turn off. Turn, 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 turn off your phone. Stop following. Stop watching and, and just open your Bible. Open your Bible and allow the spirit of the living God to minister to you where the Lord will show us that there are some things that we are experiencing, not because of uh, and some, 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 some enemies, not because of some hater, not because of the devil. There are some things that you and I experience because of our disobedience to God and God will allow some things to happen or God himself to turn some things away from us. And the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that God disciplines those who he loves. So some things we need to stop trying to get out of and, and begin to ask the Lord God to help us see us through it so that we can repent and turn back to him and learn our lesson from it. Yes, we are saved. Yes, we are covered under the blood of Jesus. But some of you, some of us are pleading the blood of Jesus over things that is a direct uh, that is direct to your sin. That is a direct response to your disobedience to God. And now you have to through in it. And he's still he's still graceful. He still gives us grace. And yes, we're still covered under the blood. But you need to stop pleading and, and, and calling the devil a lie because, yes, the devil is a lie. But God's word is true. <laughs> say that instead of keep saying the devil is a lie why don't you say God's word is true where some of us I'm guilty of it I've had to experience it I hope I don't I hope I can keep that at a minimum um, but the point is that some things that we're going through in our current lifetime is is, is, is is a direct effect because of some choices that we made and here what we see or what we can learn from Israel is that God had compassion on them God continuously warned them of the things they were doing and likewise God warns us now God first and foremost warns us through his word he warns us through his Holy Spirit the Bible, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit does not not speak on his own he only speaks what he hears he leads us to all truth and all understanding jesus says that he convicts the world he convicts us in regards to sin he, he the holy spirit pushes us or points us back toward jesus some of us have gotten warning after warning after warning and we just keep riding through the stop sign and we speed up through the red light and then eventually boom we crash we crash we have an accident and it was not because the lights didn't warn us to slow down or to stop. It's because we completely ignored them. And we can learn that from Israel. We should try to keep this at a minimum for us. There are some things, there are some things, I'll say it again, and I'm going to move on past it, and then I'm finished here. There's some things that you and I experience. It is not because of our haters. It is not because of enemies. It is not because of the enemy, the devil. It is because you, you. I made a choice that was contrary to the word of God. And I know uh, Lord, God is graceful and God is merciful. He's all of those things, but he's also judging. He's also judging. And we need to uh, get a clear picture and a clear idea of who God is and stop and just stop the drama and stop these watered down versions of the Bible. Now, I am thankful for Jesus Christ because God doesn't kill me. God doesn't destroy me. And when they, and even though he should, it is because I'm covered under the blood that Jesus can say, no, Father, I paid the price for him or I paid the price for her. So, yes, we do have a savior. And yes, we do have an intercessor in Jesus Christ. However, comma, that does not mean that we escape, that we escape. Uh, the ramifications of the decisions that we make. And we see that here because God did bring Israel out of the captivity, but they still had to do their time. They still had to do their time. I'm going to move on past that because that's not, that doesn't make you excited. I mean, I, that doesn't make you say amen. That doesn't get you shouting and screaming and excited. There's no lights, no smoke, but no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's true. It's, it's word that we sometimes have to face um, the repercussions of the decisions that we make. So that's first and second Chronicles, the outline 
the outline first chronicles chapter one through nine deal with the genealogies and i know some of that is born such and such begot such and such and begot such and such just the genealogies but it's important it's there for a reason it's there for a reason remember all scripture is god inspired so if it's there uh, god has it there for us to learn something from it i know those are some of those some of those books that we gotta well, this is just a struggle to get through but it's there for a reason and even in some of those uh, so we'll find in some of those cases there's small little pieces of narrative in there where there's some stories to something um, we can grab we can, we can grasp what's happening um, so Chapters one through nine, first chronicles is genealogies. The second, and that's the first section. Section two, uh, chapter 10, uh, is the last days and death of Saul. Chapter 10, section two of first chronicles is the last days and the death of Saul. Um, and then the third section or the final section of first chronicles um, is covered between chapters 11 through 29. And it covers the reign of David, the reign of King David. And then lastly, second chronicles, um, chapters one through nine. Chapters 1 through 9 of 2 Chronicles cover the reign of Solomon. And then chapters 11 through, I mean 10 through uh, 36, 10 through 36 covers the history of the kingdom of Judah. Wow. That takes us all the way through First and Second Chronicles. So when we pick back up next week, we'll conclude with these final. Uh, actually, no. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we'll do a brief summary of the kingdom period, which I just did. That we won't. We don't have to do that. But starting next week. We're going to cover the pre-exilic and the exilic prophets starting next week. We'll cover the pre-exilic and the exilic prophets, and then we'll do the post-exilic prophets. And then I know Pastor G, didn't you leave out Psalms and Proverbs and Song of Solomon? No, we'll cover the poetical books lastly. Those will be the last books that we cover of our Old Testament survey. Well, I know I said a lot. I know that I'm talking real fast and working through these books real fast. So, but do not be afraid do not fret if in fact i have said something that you did quite catch or you still have questions man let's talk about it let's talk about it there's a few ways that you could talk about it first and foremost remember every other tuesday coming this tuesday we will have our zoom bible study where we can have personal one-on-one -on -one engagement so what does that mean that means uh, look on the flyer make sure you get the meeting id number and the password and come in seven o'clock from 7 p.m to 7 45 this thursday we will have our zoom bible study likewise if you're watching this video i know some people don't like to to to, to comment or some people don't like to use the live chat, but man, it is, let us know that you're here. Type something in the live chat right now. If it's something I said, put something in the live chat so I can see it. And then I'll discuss it on next week. I can discuss it on next week. And then lastly, you can also send me an email. You can send an email to Pastor G at the lighthouse on the pike dot o r g again that's pastor g at the lighthouse on the pike dot o r g don't let this moment pass because you might say oh i had something asked but i forgot what it was send it in we can discuss it we can discuss it on the zoom we can discuss it i'll bring i'll, I'll make sure that i'll answer it on the, on uh, for the next stream before the but before we start or jump into the next lesson man i want to make this year um because again we don't know I, it is my prayer I hope that, th that COVID would pass this, but what if in fact it's not? What if in fact it is not the Lord's will for this to happen yet? What if this is a season or a time that we still, that there's more time that we have to work through and all we have is these digital platforms on how we are to communicate with each other. So I know none of us have planned on being here this long doing this, but it is what we, we, it is what we have. So let's use it to our advantage. Let's use it to further the kingdom of God. And we don't have to be feel or feel so disconnected. I know it's, it's a hurdle and sometimes it's hard for me too. I don't like just talking to an empty room or empty church. Um, I wish I could be right here with you all, but let's use these other tools to utilize that so that we can still uh, be faithful to our studying of the word. That's all I have for that. So remember, this coming Tuesday is our Zoom Bible study. Make sure you get the meeting ID number. If it's not a phone number, it's the meeting ID number and the password. Likewise, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is Friday, and I was just playing, but I think I'm going to just keep this tag. Tomorrow is Free Food Friday, Free Food Friday. Meet us right outside the front of the church at 5904 Marlboro Pike, right in front of the front drive through Open up your trunks, throw down your window, tell us where you want, and one of the, somebody here will assist you. We'll just, we have free, uh, fresh produce. As far as I know, it's just produce tomorrow. 
Um, the delivery hasn't come yet. Um, but anyway, we have free food, free food Friday, and we're supposed, it is my plan that we're going to do this every Friday. I do know for now that we do have a shipment coming every Friday this month of the month of January. And again, what's the price? It is free 99, free 99. It is free. All you got to do is come, come to the Circle Drive 5904 Marlboro Pike, and we will assist you. Tell every, tell everybody that you know pick up a neighbor while supplies last uh, we have free food this Friday and we're going to tag it free food Friday and then lastly but certainly not least I am so grateful and thankful for each and every one of you who uh, helps out and participates uh, with your financial givings to this ministry. It is because of your givings that we're able to do things like this. It is because of your givings that these lights are still on. It is because of your givings that we're able to broadcast these messages to you. So I thank God for you and I encourage you, I encourage you if you're not a giver that you got to get in on it and know it is not like, I'm not trying to sell it like it's buying a lottery ticket or anything like that but no it is giving to the kingdom of God and the purposes of his kingdom and God himself God himself rewards you and because of your giving we're able to give back and do things like this because there are so many people that are hurting there are so many people that do not have uh, that do not have their basic needs and we want to do the ministry we want to do the ministry and ministry means to to serve. Therefore, we have to be ministers, servants is what that term is. It is not just some title in church so somebody can call us like, no, Jesus says the greatest amongst you will be your servant. And one way that you can serve is to give to this ministry so that we can um, always have something to give back to others. And you can do that three ways. Um, first, you can visit our website and uh, the lighthouse on the pike dot org, the lighthouse on the pike dot org and click the giving tab. Secondly, you can give by way of the cash app, by way of the cash app. And our cash tag is lighthouse on the pike It's cash tag lighthouse on the pike. And then last but certainly not least, you can give by way of mail. And our address is the lighthouse on the pike five nine zero four Marlboro Pike. That is all that I have for you all on today. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday right across the hall in the sanctuary Tuesday on Zoom. And then again, next Thursday, right here back in the classroom and even tomorrow on Friday uh, to come participate. Um, we always need extra hands or if you are in need or know someone in need, come right here. 5904 Marlboro Pike, uh, District Heights, Maryland for free food Friday. That's all I have for you all. I pray that the Lord's peace and blessings be amongst you all. Grace and peace.